Welcome to What the Flick, everybody. Uh, Better Call Saul, episode four, is it? Uh, gloves yeah. off. Yeah. Uh, gloves off. This is good because Michelle and Meredith are both here. So, um, and Alonzo, but we don't care about you. Um, I'm mean, we're used to you and me. But uh, so now when I, I, I get their names wrong, uh, just the right one will start talking. <laughs> um, uh, no, but I, I got Michelle, Meredith, I know. Okay. Uh, anyway, so episode four, uh, Better Call Saul. Um, as always, you know, just like layered and rich and good and, and I mean, right? Is there, I mean, oh, is, yeah, uh, yeah. What's, is there anything ever wrong? No, no. And I love starting with the flashback. I was like totally in oh. the whole time. Like, oh. how are we going to get there? How oh, the flash forward. Right. Yeah, yeah, flash right, forward. Right, yeah. Right, yeah. right, exactly. right. And, and, and I love, I love, and I love that that the one eighty trick where, mm-hmm. uh, like, Genevieve Bujold has a moment like that in Dead Ringers, where like she's profile, she looks great, da, 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 and then she turns and yeah, turn. right, 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 because you think yeah. he's drinking, yeah, again, mm-hmm. yeah, right, but he's not even really drinking. He, I mean, first of all, he just wants a Pabst, mm-hmm. right? Just, <laughs> and he, and he, and he does, yeah. as it turned out, he earned it. Yeah. He did. Yeah. He no really question. did. Yeah. No, and something I, I always forget, like I always thought we were, I, I forgot we're on episode four because the show is so intense. I'm like, oh, we got to be on episode like six or seven. I'm yeah, like, there's a lot. No, of... it's, it's a lot going on. But this episode was, it was a Mike episode. And I was really, really happy because <laughs> I love Mike's. Oh, Mike. Yeah, Mike's. At the, and, you know, just like, like there's a degree of the, the guy, the, 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 the roles that certain actors play mean something. So you see a scene between... Uh, Jonathan Banks mm-hmm. and Jim Beaver. Yes. <laughs> and so you're like, he's not going to take any weapon, right? I mean, we no. didn't know he's going to do that. But when he doesn't take any weapon, he's going to offer him money for his time, yep. and Jim Beaver's going to turn that money down because he's Jim Beaver. <laughs> There's no way Jim Beaver <laughs> takes this money. And of, co- and of course he didn't. It's like these two guys who live by a set of, like, they're, Code. Una- they're right, they're, they are by uh, the law standards, unethical, illegal men. Yeah. But they have a standard of behavior that they both conform to, and it's a, and it's an admirable standard of behavior. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could, I could go back and watch that scene again tonight, oh, yeah. just yeah. to see those two guys. And, and it's funny, because what it got me thinking about was, you know that someone's, they're, they're, they're purposefully vague about when this is all happening. Yeah. We know it's before Breaking Bad, so like you look at the phones, like nobody's got a smartphone yet, and right. you know, there's still a lot of the little texty mm-hmm. things, whatever. And I'm wondering if out there there's some gun guy who really knows that everything in that scene is appropriate to right, 19, 1999 yeah. or right. whenever this yeah. is supposed to be, you know. Yeah, that's right. We, we don't know. The cars, they're va- the cars are all vague enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, like nobody's referring to you know nobody says oh man did you see the OJ chase last night like they give us no they give us no frame of reference. I'll tell you if anything I, I really find myself coming back around to feeling sympathetic to uh, what's the brother? It's not Chuck. Chuck, it's, Chuck, uh, Chuck, Chuck is the brother yeah. mm-hmm. to Chuck because you know we end season one with oh Chuck is you know betraying Jimmy and he doesn't believe in him. But boy, everything he thinks is right. Like he knows Jimmy better than anybody, and he, but the stuff he says about Jimmy, they may be uncomfortable truths, but they are truths. But here's the yeah. thing, though: if if maybe he'd cut some slack to his brother, and maybe like I don't know, just treat him a little bit better, maybe Jimmy wouldn't go all the all the way to the the level that he does. Like I think I think Jimmy responds the way he does to his brother because he gets cracked on all the time. I kind of think like, yeah, you know, maybe Jimmy does keep screwing up, but look at the way he gets treated yeah, by well, everyone but, Okay, him. but what's the what's the chicken and the egg here? I you know, know did did Chuck start yeah. did Chuck start uh, you know talking down mm-hmm. to, to Jimmy and treating him like crap before or after Jimmy started I doing got, terrible yeah, yes. things that merited it, you but know? But at yeah. some point in my Worldview. Mm-hmm. Chuck has to respect the strides, the strides that Jimmy mm-hmm. made. Like Jimmy totally. slipping, Jimmy yeah. didn't go to law school. Then he went to law school. Yeah. Then he got the job at the firm. Then he did deliver on stuff. And, and, and I, but I think he does. I think he says that. No, in, but he no. still undermines yeah. him yeah. in every yeah. meeting. In that first meeting, you know, when when they're praising Jimmy for the outreach, Chuck's like, I just have one question. I mean, the the Chuck is undermining Jimmy every but step of the way. But, and Jimmy then it's also incumbent on Jimmy. To overcome that but undermining, I, but I don't know that he's just undermining seriously. him, though. I, I think that if if you're Chuck and you know what Jimmy's capable of, and you and there's all this stuff riding on it, there's like major law firms and it's a big suit and like people's jobs are at stake, especially Kim's now. It's sort of like maybe I have to ask this uncomfortable question because. It's great that you did this, but how did you do but, it, But if that Jimmy? wasn't his brother and that was the guy who brought in all those people, would he be questioning it? Would he wouldn't be, be doing the same thing if it weren't. Like, now, yeah, again, he has the Again, but he has, but he has yeah, the knowledge. Yeah, That's yeah. why, yeah. I don't know. Then I, he's got to do it yeah. in private. He's got, like, yeah. he, yes. he, he, he did All right, okay. So, I'll, I mean, they're both, it's a yeah. dysfunctional, 
uh, fraternal relationship. No, and I'm not, and, I'm not saying that, that Jimmy is all terrible and that Chuck is a saint here. I mean, there, there's a lot of mess going on with both of them. Yeah. But I just think that at least we're, the fact that we're having this conversation about mm -hmm. two characters on a TV show, a lot of TV yeah, shows totally. don't, but in can't that, carry that weight. But in that fight, I think still Jimmy had the ethical... Hi, Saul. Jimmy. Yeah. The, wow. Yeah. Jimmy had the ethic. The show is called the, the guy who's not on the show. Yeah. Um, uh, Jimmy had the ethical high ground because he came in about Kim, oh. right? Yeah. And and to yeah. that extent, he was he was right. To Chuck's credit, he was like, well, she didn't say that. And then Jimmy said, they just they did things that TV doesn't do. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. he said, she would never do that. She wouldn't. Yeah. She wouldn't. Yeah. She, I, would, she I, wouldn't throw me under the bus yeah, the no, way I, I threw her under the it, bus. I love yeah. that scene where where they're asking her about the commercial and she won't say he didn't tell me right. that it was not approved because yeah. that would yeah. be totally undercutting her and and Kim to her credit is too totally. cool that's, for that. That's yeah. what I love about the show. Is, oh yeah, oh. it is. Well, and it writes all the grayers. It writes all the nuances that actually happen in real life. It doesn't make yeah, everything right. so And black assumes and that you're paying enough attention yeah. that they don't have to tell you they're mm -hmm. doing it. Exactly. But I did think if I have one complaint it's that the jump from that super interesting discussion about Kim's punishment mm -hmm. uh, to to you want me to quit being a lawyer seemed extreme. Quick. Seemed a little didn't quite. No. I, I think Unless that's been it's an underlying from the thing. Other yeah. season. Yeah, that's the. Of, okay, I, I mean, I'm, I, th I think yeah. that's that's been the elephant in the room of all of their encounters ever since Jimmy got involved with. Sam Piper and like and, and being a lawyer is my thing. You're not allowed to be a lawyer, and you disgrace the family name and the law in the way well, you were a lawyer. Well, well I, I feel like like you're a, you are a con artist. You will always be a con artist, and now you're a con artist with uh, with a law degree. But, you know, you're a con artist who passed the bar, but you'll always be a con artist. So you're going to be that kind of lawyer that gives us all a bad name. Well, and I do think the only thing is it just depends on how drastic he thinks Kim's situation is, and I'm assuming he thinks she's out quite. Quite quickly. Who? I, who? Like, I, then did I Jimmy think think Jimmy that thinks that they're going to get rid of Kim, and it seems like they might. Mm -hmm. So I think that throwing that on the table was really just had more to do with how much he respects Kim. Yeah. And, okay. I I, and I, 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 I got you. I, but it did obviously it was something. They both feel it like like that was yeah. something that had been. So anyway, I I, I did. I, of course, I liked it. Of course, I just thought maybe that didn't. That felt a little. That felt a little boy. We got to, that escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I will say, I, I, I keep seeing the parallels between Jimmy and Johnny Cochran <laughs> because oh. because the, yeah. the whole scene at the beginning mm. where Jimmy is being dressed down by the partners and he never acknowledges that he's done something wrong. He keeps bringing it back around mm -hmm. to like it worked. It was mm -hmm. effective. The headline and, here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Like just cannot yeah, yeah. for a second. But, and and it's like that's what you want in your lawyer. This is the guy mm -hmm. who's never going to talk about how you actually so, yeah. killed that guy. You want the lawyer to talk about how you know you gave money to orphans. Great yeah. point. Because I thought of another show that we're more that we're talking about and reviewing. There's a moment in House of Cards in 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 the episode we're about to review somewhere in four, five, or six where Heather Dunbar's lawyer, the woman running against oh, right. Frank Underwood, yes. oh, where yeah. she realizes, oh, they might tell a lie here. So she says, as your lawyer, I'm going to step out of the room. I can't right? be here for I this conversation. Yeah. And, you, yeah. and, and I, you have this moment of, you know what? I'll take the Jimmy. Like, yeah. I, yeah. like, <laughs> like but that lawyer is not going to disgrace her firm, but there's a falseness to her. And to some extent, why I guess I was on Jimmy's side, I'm like, you know what? The headline here is it did work. Who cares that your name was up there? Your clients, they're not going to run anywhere. They want good representation. That era is changing. Whenever this time is set, those people aren't recognizing that having your uh, law firm on TV isn't, we're not reacting the same way we would have in 1962. Sure. And they're yeah. still stuck in that. Ed Begley it's Jr. is still stuck in that time mode. So I, I would rather have the do anything. I'd rather have the Jimmy who hires the guys to make the, the ad and video. paint the billboard yes. and do, you know, that that lawyer... That lawyer's, but that's the lawyer I want, and that lawyer is, in a sense, far more honest about the job of, 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 mm -hmm. of, of in many cases, yeah. what lawyers are than the pretense of an ethical high ground that the other guys maintain. Yeah, of the, of the, of, 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 la la la, I can't yeah. hear right. you is basically what's happening. That's right. I'm just going to yeah. leave the room. I know that's happening, but if I'm not in the room, you can't yeah, say later that I knew. Give me, no, give me, so, give me Jimmy. It's the old guard uh, giving way to the new. Now, yeah. okay, we have to talk about Tuco. We have to have to talk about <laughs> Tuco because getting that, that backstory about him knowing that when he's on drugs is when he is crazy AF. Yeah. As they mm -hmm. like to say on the internet. That was such a great scene to kind of have him come back. And crazy, crazy eight. 
Get to see all four little crazy, crazy eight before. Who, who, uh, who? So crazy eight uh, was the little drug dealer that they were getting the money from. He comes in first, and he ends up as the one that gets chained down in the basement that ultimately eats it. That Walt and Jesse have to. Oh, oh the bathtub. Yeah, bathtub. That's, that's that guy. Yeah. That's that guy. Yeah. What happened to Tuco in Breaking Bad? I don't um, remember. Was he the one in the building the, that blew the, up? The bag of, the bag of meth that um, Walt sciences. That was sciences. actually. Uh, yeah. He sciences the meth bag and yeah. it explodes and Tugo. So yeah. he's walking out of the mm -hmm. building and the building. I like, remember him being in Breaking Bad. Yeah. They, 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 yeah, there's that big meeting in the room and he's got the giant bag of meth that's actually yeah. a hidden season explosive. One. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's the main season one bad guy. He's really, he's just, he's yeah. off his rocker because he's using. But we, we learned from Nacho that when Tuco uses, he goes yeah. off the deep end. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's really great to kind of bring in those characters, get that backstory totally, yeah, established. Yeah. But with Mike, you know, I, I, like I said, for me, this was a Mike episode and I really yeah. love seeing, you know, Mike wanting to like start to go all the way in to get this this money that he wants to help his family uh but then he ultimately chooses to not take the full hit on Tuco to go a different route to go a route that would get, land him in jail uh and he chooses to take half the money uh by doing half the job and not going full measure and i think that's going to be something that comes to bite him in the ass later on and i think it's going to lead to my favorite yes. line no more half measures um yes well i i I, I agree, except that what makes that goes back to that first conversation mm -hmm. that we had to start this about Jim Beaver and Mike. Mm -hmm. Like under that ethical, under the under the rules of of human behavior that guys like Mike and Jim Beaver in every role they'll ever have yeah. will, will, will follow, except forty eight hours where he's just a bad guy. Um, uh, you know, he won't. It is okay. He's a former cop, and this yeah. is a bad guy. I'll send him to prison for five to ten years. He's a criminal. Right, that's okay. That meets some standard that is okay on Mike's yeah. ethical checklist. Well, but standing a hundred yards away yeah. and pointing a rifle at him and shooting him in the head, that's not. That no. doesn't meet even for the even for a bad guy. That is not something that 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 but, Mike can do. And even without, without ethics, he also raises the very valid point of like, well, you know, if if you kill this guy, the cartel isn't just going to be like, oh well. I you think know, I guess was, you move up now. You but know, that like, was his reasoning to get yeah, to, to get, get Nacho to come around no, to meet uh, yeah. Mike's sure. standard. But, right? I, but, Mike but, wasn't but it's, but it's a good him. reason, though. Right. Yes, <laughs> it was a good reason because he's smart, also. But yeah. he wasn't yeah. going to shoot him. He was not going to assassinate. But we somebody. obviously mm -hmm. see we we know Mike from Breaking Bad, where he does go all the way to, to complete his job. And I think something that we're going to finally see what that does that causes him to finally break. And maybe maybe the reason we never see his daughter-in-law is maybe that's the reason. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. something's going to happen to cause Mike to go full measure. No, this, this I'm, I'm excited. I'm, 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 I'll be excited to see this. I don't want to see Mike break, but I'm, I want to know what causes that. I think this yeah. show is going to be as much the Mike origin story as it is the yeah. Saul Goodman origin story. Because they're so entwined. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so good. So good. All right. Some of us will be back uh, yeah. uh, next week with uh, more, uh, more uh, uh, I can't remember the Better name. Call Better Call Saul. Saul. Thank you. Better Call Saul. Thank you. It would help if there were a character named Saul. <laughs>